Hi everyone and welcome to episode 16 of the By the Lakeside podcast. My name is Sandy and this is a podcast about my knitting and sewing adventures that take place mostly in my craft room here in my home, which is by the lake. I live just outside of Toronto in Canada and it is the middle of August right now and we are finally seeing the most beautiful sunny weather I think since summer began. We had so much rain at the beginning um, and it's really really beautiful now and I'm really enjoying the summer so so very much. We went camping a couple of weeks ago and the weather was perfect. I brought so many knitting projects with me but it was one of those um, great trips where there was so much swimming and we went with a few other families and kids and so we were really, really busy and I did not get hardly any knitting done at all, which is okay. I have been so inspired this summer. There have just been so many things that I've been um, inspired by online and I don't have any finished objects right now, which has sort of been stopping me from podcasting, but I told myself today that I'm just gonna proceed. I'm gonna film something because I have so many things that I wanna share and um, sometimes it's not finished objects and that's okay. So I am just going to jump in and get started. So the first thing um, for whips that I have is a sweater and I am very, very excited because this is actually going to be um, a Rhinebeck sweater for me. I am so super excited and grateful to be able to go to Rhinebeck this year. I have been wanting to go for the last couple of years and um, last year I remember seeing all the photos on Instagram and just wishing that I'd be able to go this year. I was planning to, I was trying to figure out a way to go when um, the lovely Amber from Makers Haven mentioned to me that they, her and her friends had a spot in their accommodation. So Amber from Makers Haven and Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady and Angie from Camel City Dye Works were all really, really sweet and offered me um, the last spot in their in their accommodation or in their uh, room. So I am so excited to be going with these awesome ladies. I can't even tell you that I have to keep pinching myself because I can't even believe that I'm going. Let alone staying with these amazing ladies who I really adore. So I feel very lucky and um, so, so excited. I'm really excited to meet so many of you um, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that as, as it approaches, but on with the sweater. So um, I'm sure you also saw, if you follow me on Instagram, which I didn't mention, but I am Sandy Ran on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, if you follow me there, you'll notice that I was kind of debating between which sweater to move along with. I had two on the needles. One of them I had to rip back completely. It was the Camaro sweater, which I love, and I will definitely um, be knitting that in the future. But I decided to go with another one that I had on the needles, and um, I'm gonna show you the, the pattern first. It's in the Making Magazine from issue number one. It is the Branches and Buds pullover from Carrie Bostick Hogue. I've shown it before. I've shown you what I've started on it before. I adore it. It's stunning. It's a really, um, I think it's a really simple body with all this gorgeous detail. So the yoke is kind of, I, I just, I wanted something that was kind of simple. I think the, the silhouette is kind of my style and a, a sweater that I would wear. So, um, yeah, I just decided this was the one I was going to go with and it felt kind of Rhinebeck to me. So this is it. I love it. I cannot wait to get to the part where you put these little buds all over the branches. And I am using, um, I didn't get very creative with the yarn. I am using the same yarn as in the project, in the magazine. It is the Quince & Co. Chickadee, which is a sport weight. And this color is called Kitty Wake. It's a heather. It's really pretty. It's just a, a really um, 
basic charcoal gray. And I'm also using, I think it's what they suggested in the um, pattern as well, but I don't have the band for it. Um, it's also the Quinsico, and I think, I don't think I'm pronouncing this right, but it's called Audouin, A-U-D-O-U-I-N. So it's kind of like, um, it's not a, I don't know, it's kind of like a brownish beige, but a cream, I should say. But it has like a brownish tinge in it when you look closely. So that is what I did the branches with, and here it is. So this is where I have gotten with my sweater and I adore it. I cannot wait to try it on. Um, just to give you an idea of where I was when I made the decision to pick it up again. So you cast on obviously at the, um, the neck rib and I had done one row of the branches and here this little progress keeper um, is marking where I picked up and finished the color work. In the yoke and am almost at the part where I can separate for the sleeves um, yeah I'm really happy with it it's a beautiful beautiful knit it's just the the weight of this yarn is really really nice too I don't think it's too heavy or scratchy for me because sometimes um, I get hot very easily so I'm also thinking about making this a three-quarter sleeve just because I love that with the really um, wide rib and the beautiful jewelry on my project here is made by Amber from Makers Haven and I know I had spoken about looking for more stitch markers, um, progress keepers, things like that on my last podcast and I got so many great recommendations so thank you and I have looked up all of them and favorited all those shops. Um, but I had, I think just after that, I had seen some of Amber's beautiful jewelry uh, for yarn and I could not resist because, I mean, really, just look at that. Beautiful. So I ordered um, some of those and I'll show you some more um, a little bit later. So yeah, that is my sweater. I am really enjoying this. It's a really um, uncomplicated knit. So. It might be a little intimidating because of the color work, but it's actually really, really easy. It's a very simple chart. And um, so far, fingers crossed, I have not stumbled into any problems. I've had to um, tink back a little bit where I, you know, I was off a little bit on one or two of them, but it was not a big deal. It was easy to fix. Um, and it's obviously something that you want to be perfect. So I think I did um, an okay job and like I said, I cannot wait to get to separating the sleeves and trying this on. It's a little bit hard to see, but I really love it. And I do have um, some of the chickadee in a whole bunch of colors that I'm excited about for those little buds when the time comes. Um, they are somewhere in here, but I will save those for another day. I've got this um, project in one of my favorite little bins that I keep around the house. This isn't really one that I take with me on the go, um, but I love them. It's a bin from Pear, and I have shown these before too. I really, um, I really like these bins. There's the logo in there. Um, and I usually get these at Chapters. I go to the store and they are in the, um, the nursery section or the baby section. Um, or you can order them online at Chapters Indigo, but they are really handy for knitting projects. I like the way that they stay open and they're usually um, nice to have beside me on the couch. So really enjoying that project and I'm super excited to have a sweater for Rhinebeck. I just hope it fits. So speaking of Rhinebeck inspired knits, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady also released a pattern um, a week or two weeks ago called Rhinebeck is Calling. It's a sock pattern and it is a beautiful, um, beautiful sock that showcases a really nice, um, really nice pattern that I think 
is just something I really wanted to try. So I usually do vanilla socks. I love doing vanilla socks with usually speckled or self-striping yarn, but this pattern just called to me, just like Rhinebeck is calling to me, and I really wanted to try it. So I don't have a picture of it here, but I have started it, um, and I'm using a yarn that I dyed, one of my experimental yarns that I dyed recently, and I really love this um, purpley, it's kind of a grayish purple mauve. And so far I have just done the cuff, and I'm ready to start with the pattern, and I'm so excited. So this is a project that um, is right by my side as well, and I'm really hoping to have these socks done for Rhinebeck. So you should check out that pattern on Ravelry. Uh, Kay has some really great um, sock patterns, but this one in particular I thought was super pretty. So I'm really excited to um, get started on the pattern. I think I got to this point and I paused because I do normally knit vanilla socks. And um, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna wait for the perfect moment to focus and pull out the pattern and give it a go because I cannot wait to get those um, really going. And I've got that in this beautiful um, yarn bowl that I ordered off of Etsy quite some time ago. If I can find the, um, the seller, I'll put it up on the screen, but I can't remember where I got this one, but I love it. So this has been one of the, the two projects that I'm kind of back and forth with. Um, I think my last whip that I'm going to show you is, uh, I'll just show you quickly, but I've got it in one of my new bags. It's um, an Alice in Wonderland, and I really love this one because I usually love tons and tons of color, but this one is really neutral and I thought very pretty with the polka dots inside. Um, and it's my cozy, cozy memories blanket. So I have been seeing quite a few people on Instagram and on their um, podcast talking about their cozy memory blankets coming back out. And even though I'm still really enjoying summer and I'm loving, you know, these last few weeks of summer, I'm really excited about. I do also feel like fall is just around the corner and I've been inspired by pumpkin recipes and thinking about fall and planning um, this trip to Rhinebeck. So I've definitely thought about my Cozy Memories blanket and I haven't done that much, but I wanted to pull it out and just give you guys a little quick snapshot of where I am. So I think you've seen all of these in a previous podcast. So I've really only added just a little bit here, but I'm excited because I've added my second row. Um, and I'm not really sure how I'm configuring these yet. So far, these um, stripes, or whatever you wanna call them, uh, where you increase and decrease, they are all going in the same direction, which I really like. So I think I'm gonna continue that and do like the quadrant, so like one quarter of it, and then figure out how to do them all to kind of meet in the middle, if that makes sense, I don't know. Um, so I've added in this one, which is an opal yarn from my advent calendar last year. And I added in a mini that I had from um, Yarn Ink. So I thought this was really pretty. And the last one I'm just, I've just added in is another opal. So I'm really having fun with this and not putting any pressure on myself to finish them, but I'm enjoying having this um, at my side whenever I feel like picking it up. I have a lot of loose ends to weave in and oh I've got this little progress keeper here which I think I've shown before. That one I think is from a homespun house. It's my little pretzel and this little spoon is one that I made myself um, just to mark my center. So loving this again. I'm really enjoying um, the needles that I got for this project. I think I splurged on them last Christmas. They are signature needles and um, they're 2.75 millimeter. They are so sharp though that they can actually hurt. So sometimes I have to be a little bit careful about how I knit because they really poke. I do wish that I had ordered the one size smaller. I can't remember if I ordered the 14 inch. I think that's what I did. Is that what this is? 
No, I ordered the 10 inch, but I kind of wish that I ordered a shorter one. Just because for this pro it's mostly for this project, that's the only reason I purchased these. Um, but I do love them, they're quite nice. So that is my blanket that I'm excited to have out for um, the coming of fall. So I think that covers my knitting. It does. Um, another project that I have been working on that I was thinking about this morning is in this, oh, it's kind of heavy. It's in this really cool, um, I don't even know what you call this, but a friend of mine saw it and mentioned that it was an ammunition box. Like it's, it's from a flea market and it's really cool, but it's kind of heavy. Um, I have my little mini loom in here and I've, like I said, I've been inspired to start so many other projects again and pick up old ones. Uh, last podcast, I was showing you the embroidery sampler that I was working on and then I walked by this in my front room and I thought, oh my gosh, why haven't I picked this up in a while? And um, Amber from A Maker's Haven, who I keep mentioning in this podcast, but she's awesome. She had um, been showing her loom and was working on it with her kids and it just inspired me to pull mine out. So I've just got a variety of uh, different yarns that I actually picked up specifically for, uh, for this project quite some time ago. Um, I just wanted to keep like a certain color story, which is totally my color story again. Um, and I just picked up random yarns that this one is really cool, look at the size of that. <laughs> um, really pretty yarns that what I picked up at Pearl Soho uh, when I was visiting a couple of years ago. And um, I've just been adding bits and pieces if I find uh, something I like. So I'm really enjoying this. The loom is a mini loom from, it's called Board and Bread. And I just ordered it on their online shop. And I've been really happy with it. It's really small and compact and um, easy to use. And I just like the size of it. So I just wanted to share that because I thought this is one of those things that it's really great to use yarns that you might have um, leftovers of. And I find it very therapeutic. There's some times when you just wanna hurry up and get stuff done, but there's other times where um, the process of actually making something is what you're craving and I think this is one of those things so I would um, suggest trying out looming if you haven't um and I think the only other thing that I have totally been obsessed with no there's two so what's been taking up a lot of my time sorry I have a hair in my face it's been taking up a lot of my time is sewing. I have been working on a lot of bags for my shop and I have fallen back in love with patchwork. I never fell out of love with it, but I didn't really have time when I was working um, to continue doing some of the patchwork items that I had in my shop at the beginning. So um, these little pouches were little notions pouches that I had quite some time ago when I opened up the shop and I love them. I use them for all kinds of things. I keep them with my sweater. Um, I've got, you know, my needles, my little um, tuft woolens, what do you call this? Body balm, hand and body balm, and just little progress keepers and stuff in here. So I'm also a pouch freak and um, I have one in my bag that might have like a portable charger for my phone or cables. Um, stuff like that. So I love these and um, these are the ones that I've kept for myself from last year. And then I recently put in some of these in my shop. So I have just been loving, um, loving making these again. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's so relaxing, I think, because there's no plan. I just kind of pull out the fabrics that I want to focus on. Um, and just start going nuts. So it becomes a complete disaster in here, but that's okay. I had a couple that I wanted to show you. So these ones I picked out um, my focal fabric first, which was were these little houses. 
And then I just found a few scraps that kind of coordinate with it. And um, I'm gonna make some more of these little pouches to go in my shop. And I think this time, because it's just kind of like a fun project and I don't really wanna wait until I have a ton of bags to post in the shop again, I think I'm just gonna pop these into my Etsy shop, you know, randomly in the middle of the week and not really announce it until they're up and I'll just kind of post and um, if you're looking for one, then you'll probably have a chance. But I'm just gonna continue making these. I loved this apple fabric. So I, um, that was my focal fabric for these and then I found these really cute other prints that I thought looked really pretty with it. So I'm having so much fun with these. So these are just gonna show up in my shop randomly. Um, I might post on Instagram that they're there, but um, my Etsy shop is Sandy by the Lakeside if you're interested and I will have those probably in the next week or so. And I've also been working on my favorite Halloween ones because like I was speaking about fall, Halloween is already on my mind. The kids are already talking about their costumes and this was one of my favorite fabrics from last year. So much that I kept one for myself. Um, and I found some more and I think I'm gonna wait to post these a little bit because I'm gonna try to make some project bags to go with these. But the other ones will be um, showing up in my shop at any given notice. So I think that covers all of my projects. So um, I haven't really, well, I shouldn't say I haven't purchased anything. I've purchased a couple of things, but they haven't arrived yet, and I'm really excited about them. Um, the only thing that has arrived that I've purchased were those beautiful um, Progress Keepers from Amber, and I just wanted to show some of the other ones that she included in my set because she's a sweetheart. Um, maybe you can see them there. A little bit hard to see, but they are really beautiful. Um, they are making me enjoy my knitting so much more. It's amazing. I love them. Um, and then I received the most beautiful and generous package in the mail that, you know, was not expected at all from sweetest lady, um, my friend Tracy, who you probably all know as the lovely Tracy from the Grocery Girls. She sent me a gorgeous card that brought me to tears and just so supportive. She's such such an amazing, amazing lady and um, anyone that, you know, comes in contact with her, I'm sure knows that. She was super, super sweet and sent me this amazing card and sweet surprise in the mail of this amazing, amazing yarn. She knows that I love Scrumptious Pearl. Um, it is the Strike Me Up yarn and a mini from Scrumptious Pearl in the custom color, I think that's what you'd call it, a custom color, that was dyed for Jody's birthday. It's the That's What She Said colorway. It's gorgeous, oh my gosh. But look at that with the mini. <gasps> I cannot wait, cannot wait to cast this on. I have so many socks to cast on, I don't even know. It's kind of stressing me out, but this one is calling to me. So beautiful. Thank you so much, Tracy. You are the best, and seriously. So in, in Tracy's package, I really wanted to share this because it's something handmade um, from Britta, from Studio Britta. And it was so special that I really wanted to share it so that you could all check out her shop. It is this beautiful Notions pouch with all of this amazing handwork. Like I can't even believe. Crochet, um, applique, embroidery, you name it. It's on there with this beautiful print and a beautiful little pull Oops. on the zipper. So, so pretty and I adore owls and I love pouches. So I was thrilled when this arrived with all kinds of tea and goodies and cards and it was just the most thoughtful gift. So thank you so much, Tracy. Um, 
I loved everything in your package, but most of all, the card was so, so special. And I just wanted to share that. So if you um, are into pouches like I am, then you should check out Britta's shop um, on Etsy. It's called Studio Britta. So that was a, a real treat this week and I'm really, really touched by so many people. Um, lastly, I think I just wanted to share a couple of my favorite things. So, okay. One of my favorite things this week, I have been on um, a huge creative kick, like I was mentioning earlier, and I have been obsessed with Creative Bug, the website. Um, and in particular, I have been really enjoying uh, one of the new classes that they put out for August by Courtney Cerruti. And I think it is called 30 Days or 30 Ways to Be Creative. And there are little videos released each day. Some of them are only a couple minutes. Some of them are a little bit longer. And they are really, um, really random, fun ways to make being creative part of your daily life, which has always been a struggle for me when I was working full time and commuting and then cooking and cleaning and all the, the usual stuff of normal life. Um, so being, cre being a creative person, I feel like it's always a challenge to make time for those things. And if you don't have um, daily habits surrounding them, it can be really, really hard. So I have found that this class has been so helpful in just kind of making me think in a more creative way. And if you do end up subscribing to Creative Bug and watching, you'll understand how. Um, Courtney is just, she lives a creative life, so she she just has a way of, of articulating how to do little things. And um, it's kind of prompted me to get the whole family doing things together again in that way because my oldest son is an amazing drawer, but because he's 13 and playing a lot of video games and um, doing teenage stuff now, he doesn't really stop to draw as much. And my youngest son is definitely a maker. He is constantly making slime and rainbow looming. Um, and even my husband is actually a really creative person. He doesn't practice doing things creatively, but he does amazing collages and he's just got a really neat hand when he draws too. So I wanted to try to get the whole family drawing together or just sitting and doing their own thing at the table together. And so I created a little station or tray of all of my art supplies and put them in the dining room so that we could do that. So that is one of my favorite things. Every time I walk by, I am so excited to see it. I love it and um, the kids are really happy with it and it actually forces um, all of us to kind of do small things around the table um, other than eating. So I'm really enjoying that. That is absolutely one of my favorite things and um, Creative Bug has just been uh, really really inspiring me this month. So I wanted to mention that again. I do have a product that I wanted to mention. Um, I won't talk too long about it because it's not really knitting or sewing related, but I'm always talking about um, hand creams or body lotions and things like that. But this one from Aveda called Stress Fix is another one of my favorites. And um, I keep this by my bedside table and I wish you could smell this one, but if you like, essential oils and things like lavender, then you would absolutely love this. I find it extremely calming, um, especially if you're wound up from the day and um, when you go to bed at night, you can't really wind down. This would be perfect because it's really, really calming. Um, it's really, really, it's kind of like a little bit of luxury at the end of the day. So I wanted to recommend that. And lastly, I wanted to recommend something um, a little bit different. Sometimes I mention um, podcasts that I really love, but this time I wanted to mention some Instagram accounts that have completely inspired me. And as far as I know, they do not have um, 
they don't have podcasts. They are around in other places, like on Ravelry, but uh, their Instagram accounts are extremely inspiring and their photos are amazing, so I just wanted to share. So the first one is uh, Leanne, who her um, Instagram name is Lili Yaz. So I'm gonna put it up on the screen so that um, if you wanna look her up, you can. She's from Arizona and um, she has the most beautiful knitting projects ever. And every time I see a new project that she has cast on, I immediately kind of jump in my head and think, I need to cast that on. What do I have to do that? Can I start that now? Do I have enough needles or do I have the yarn? So um, I just really, really love her taste and um, you probably follow her already, but if you don't, I wanted to uh, suggest you do. Um, another one is Jessie from LA and her Instagram username is the bon vivant. So I'm gonna put that up on the screen too. And um, again, she's just got some beautiful projects, but even just um, her pictures of life, I think are really inspiring. And she has a little one and um, I really enjoy her feed right now. And then the last one um, is Demi Brooke. And I believe her, um, her username on Instagram is Demi Brooke. So I'm gonna put that on the screen too. And she is uh, a new find for me. She's quite popular on Instagram. She lives with her family in an Airstream. And I have just been fascinated with that kind of lifestyle for a couple of years now. I follow a few people that live in Airstreams, but her photo stream is just super inspiring, beautiful, um, just the outdoors, the nature walks, the, the pictures of the kids. like. I find it really, really calming and beautiful. So if you like um, that kind of thing where you get little snapshots of uh, people living in a small kind of space and uh, exploring outdoors, then you might really like her too. So those are the three I wanted to share. I thought it would be something a little bit different and um, just kind of spreading the love for people that I've really been enjoying. And I think that's about all I have for today. So. I am going to quickly gather everybody and see if we can get outside and enjoy some of the afternoon. And I have so many projects. I'm really excited to um, work on so many things in the coming weeks. And I hope to just keep coming back to podcast even when I don't have finished objects. That's kind of my goal. I've been struggling with that. So I am gonna give that um, a bit more effort and see how I do. So um, if you do want to check out the Ravelry group for this podcast, you can go to the groups tab. It is the Sandy by the Lakeside podcast and um, introduce yourself there. And I am thinking about actually hosting a giveaway, a giveaway at some point. Um, I think my one year anniversary just passed a couple of weeks ago, but I kind of forgot about it because I was camping. So I am just gonna try to gather some, um, some items to do a giveaway and think of something so that the next time I podcast, I will, um, I will announce that. And I just wanted to thank you all for joining me again and I hope you're all having a wonderful summer and finding time um, to spend with your families or your loved ones and making all of the things that you wanna do. So have a great summer and I will hopefully be back soon. Bye.